what we're coming out of, you know, the PTSD, the post-traumatic slave disorder that we still have on our culture and on our people is not going to let us use their same exact methods, formulas, and tactics to get to the goals that they've gotten to. It's dark as obsidian, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The plug that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, I am your girl, Debbie and the Key, the original wireless woman. Welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. So I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all a trigger warning. My neighbors are setting off firecrackers. Doesn't matter what it is, Christmas, firecrackers, Thanksgiving, firecrackers, New Year's Eve, firecrackers, birthdays, firecrackers. So if you hear some booming and some popping off, I'm not in the ghetto, I'm not in the hood, they ain't rat a tat tat and that's just my neighbors doing what they do. I had to forego my full dance routine that I had planned for my opening tonight because I'm waiting on my onboard microphone for my camera. So we're going to see if that helps fix some of the crackling I was complaining about in the last video. Today's episode is the Cult of Personality Black Divorce episode of The Wireless Woman. I need all of my divorcees and about the bees to the front of the class for read aloud. All right, fun fact time. Fun fact about me, I have been married and divorced two times. Now, while there are certain things I won't be able to help you with, there are a few things that I know I know. And one is how to detect and identify a narcissist that ain't gonna do nothing but waste your time. I bet you wonder where I've been. Two, how to position yourself for a man to propose, and three, when it's time to let it go. Now, I'm sure from within the community, many people would think that the divorce rate in the black community is higher, but it's actually not in comparison with the national average. The black divorce rate is actually lower than the white divorce rate. However, it is increasing and keeping pace with white divorce rate trends. I believe that as the black culture is becoming increasingly capitalistic and keeping track with white supremacist views, that is affecting every facet of the black community and black nation 
building because ultimately a lot of people think that black people can't be white supremacists but as we adopt the same views as the dominant culture their value systems are trickling down into how we do life and how we see our community so even though the black divorce rate is higher than other minority ethnicities truth of the matter is that amongst black men married to black women the divorce rate is astonishingly low for for black people who still value marriage family and community these trends have remained stable and steady and consistent throughout the 60s 70s 80s and 90s really until recently with millennials in the 2000s coming into my generation we're seeing a lot less marriage we're seeing a breakdown and instability of marriages a lot people are waiting a lot longer to have children and the bonds of matrimony are highly unstable in the black race. So I would like to put forward that we really begin to evolve and change our views on what black marriage is. And this is actually in an attempt to prevent these black divorce rates from going up. But honestly, if we don't begin to do community building and change and, and make changes to our value system, particularly the music, art, media, like y'all actually have to get off the internet sometimes and go live your life because what's going on out here in real life is not what we're seeing on social media. Like I'm starting to think that a lot of those trolls that be down in the comments roasting black women and praising white women and just talking trash down on black women is actually like other people like I don't want to say it's like white men or other black women or something somebody so I, I'm starting to believe as I'm actually having inner as I'm actually having interactions with black men that this can't possibly really be the collective sentiment now of course there are those outliers but I believe that in a lot of ways media is starting to weaponize black men against black women and it, it it's not possible when you're actually out there on the ground shoulder to shoulder with other black people that this is really the collective image that we're putting out to the world like it's kind of like those white people and other race people that came out during the protest that were actually out there being a menace and when it came out it would look like oh black lives matter did this and black lives matter did that but it actually wasn't just black people there were other white people there that were like inciting that type of maniacal radical madness that generally doesn't actually spark up when black people are collectively together and they were weaponizing it and making the message look like and making it look like black people couldn't protest peacefully not saying that it wasn't black people just saying that it wasn't always only black people so Anyway, I think it's something going on like that in the media, like down in the comments, because some of the stuff is so wild for men that are coming out of black women, being raised, nurtured and developed by black women. Some of it is just a little bit too far fetched on a wide scale level. But as these pockets of conflict are forming, of course, they're gathering strength, you know, like years ago it was unheard of to think that donald trump could win the presidency then he wins the presidency and it's like he develops his own little fascist party of people that all of a sudden because a lot of people were speaking against him up front and then all of a sudden it was like yeah you know like i agree with him so i'm not sure if all of these messages are being initiated by black people but it's definitely i mean don't get me uh, don't get me wrong People have definitely attached themselves to these movements and it is gaining strength and speed. But, but I do believe that there is a tide and undercurrent of people who just aren't on the internet caring that much about dumb stuff that people are saying who actually speak for the majority of people. But I honestly think we're going to have to evolve on our views of marriage. Like women, if you're really just marrying these men because you want to be able to have sex and not feel like you're going to be condemned by the church, well, you need to deconstruct your religious views. Because if you already got that in your heart, that marriage is a way out of sin and you want to get the marriage but not actually deal with the sin, trust me, it'll end up right in the middle of your marriage wreaking havoc anyway. So if you want to have the sex, just have it. You don't need rings and all this different stuff to legitimize a situation 
situation that God might not even be in anyway. Here's the thing, women. If we're already coming to the picture 50-50, you have to understand that the black economic system is different than any other race or ethnicity in this country. So it's time for us to look at marriage, community, family differently. What we're coming out of, you know, the PTSD, the post-traumatic slave disorder that we still have on our culture and on our people is not going to let us use their same exact methods, formulas, and tactics to get to the goals that they've gotten to. There's got to be more than one way to skin this cat, and we're going to have to use another way. Capitalistic views that value the individual above the collective are not working for black people even though we have even though we have tokens that are getting out in front and doing things that look attractive to us collectively as a people we're not closing the wealth gap we are not moving forward towards even equality with the dominant class which is something that they were fighting for in the 50s and 60s being able to sit on a bus beside a white person being able to sit in a classroom or a restaurant beside a white person is not equality it is not the pursuit of life liberty and happiness that was not what we were marching for. We weren't marching just to marry white folks and work at certain jobs. We were marching for political, social, economic, financial equality. And we've only managed to attain just a few of those goals for just a few people. So here's the thing, women. We're coming to these marriages in a 50-50 situation anyway. Black women are the only group of women in this country that out earn their men despite the fact that there is still a gender pay gap even in the black community amongst black women and black men black men are out black men for the same comparable education and experience of a black woman will earn 10 percent more than her but still the mean median income of all women in this country other than hispanic women out earns the black man you literally have asian men white men asian women white women hispanic men black women black men and hispanic women that's how the mean median income now we're not talking about billionaires and the millionaires and because the people that are really controlling all the wealth in this country are white period but in the middle in the middle not your extremely poor people which are black and hispanics and not your uber super rich people you have some asians that are uber super rich but right now asian people are running the middle class okay black people we're not keeping up even though we have the most buying power in this country, we don't have the most earning power. So we have slipped from being right under whites fighting for equality to now being down under almost all the other ethnic racial groups. Even though, like I said, it's not a race, it's all white. Asian is white, Hispanic is white, unless they're Afro-Latinas or Afro-Asians, which you've never heard they're all white but my point is if we're just going to look at minority ethnicities black people are below all of that and the only people that are actually competing with the men of other races and their own men are black women everybody else is being out earned by their men by a margin of more than 20 percent women black women have cut the gender pay gap down to 10 percent Okay, so just per capita household income, we're coming in hot, ladies. We're coming in hot, 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 hot. We're coming in hot, okay? So no, we're not going to have the same marriage dynamics of other ethnic and racial groups when the men of those groups are capable of providing for their women at 50% more than what a black man can bring to the table with a black woman. And I'm done talking about it. If we're going to move forward as a people, we have to acknowledge the truth of the numbers. If we're already coming into 50-50 marriages, then we need to be regarded in our households as being, if not leaders, 
at least an equal participant. Otherwise, you are still an underclass. Otherwise, you're still a part of the same capitalistic system that put that pits white people against black people is now pitting black men against black women. We're going to continue to see very high divorce rates if we don't deal with the reality of marriage being an evolving institution in the black community. Women, men can no longer be the ones that are dangling the carrot of incentive to marry you. You're coming to the table with the same, if not more things. They're asking us on social media platforms, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? The numbers are here. The numbers say we bring education, we bring economics, we bring stability to the community and to the household. We're the political figures that are out front making changes. We are the social figures that are actually doing the majority of the work in the community. And it has always been that way. As I said in my first video, 60% of the Black Panther Party was Black women out there actually doing the work. And the men did what they do, which is to stabilize and protect their own community. Like, I don't care anymore who's more desirable. I don't care if white women are more submissive. I don't, when we are interrate, when we are intermarrying, and I say this, listen, let me give a caveat. Story time. I, one of my two husbands was a white Hispanic man. I've said this before. So I have been married to a white man and a black man and I can tell you how the wealth in community moves it doesn't matter who is black that marries a non-black person the money goes out of the community unless you are marrying unless you as a black woman are marrying a white man who has more wealth than you then you're able to bring wealth into the community but if you're going to take a bottom shelf becky or a bottom shelf brad then you are just siphoning money out of your community into another person's community through the institution of marriage because marriage is a wealth building institution and we can't keep lying to ourselves about that simple as that and i gotta be honest with you i don't care who marries whom you see that you like that you, you like that grammatically correct statement? I do not care who marries whom. It's not about that. It's about how do we be sober minded and look at the value systems. We also have to deal with white Christianity and spirituality and cultural values. These capitalistic white supremacist values coming into how black children are being raised y'all say these interracial children are black and to a certain extent they are because whiteness is guarded biracial children can be biracial and they can be black but they will never be acknowledged as being white because white people protect their racial identity you cannot be inducted into the white race if you belong to any other race racial or ethnic group white people not going to allow that it's black people that have these open borders and say anybody who's got a drop can be black. These are rules that white people set up to make sure that their race would never be diluted, but ours potentially could. We're being divided against ourselves because we have no cultural racial identity as black people. And as I said, and I'm going to restate, I don't care who Mary I do not care who marries whom, whether that be along racial, gender lines. I do not care who's in relationship with whom. This is not an indictment against interracial. I have tons of friends that are in interracial couples. I have been in an interracial couple myself and in the right context where people are supporting and respectful of the cultural differences of each other. I support it. That's fine. As long as black men and women have a cultural identity that says we continue to move forward as a people, you do what you want. But when you have to demigrate, when you have to degrade and put down your own race in order to justify why you're in an interracial relationship, then at that point, it's a self-hate thing. Then at that point, you're a white supremacist and you might as well just accept that that's the way you're going to be viewed. Like I said, you are an enemy of the state at that point. You're an enemy of the black empire, of the black state at that point. More than any other race, black women marry hypogamously, meaning they marry down. 
So so we we got to stop this whole mental mind screw that says that the man is the prize. I don't even know how this entered into the black culture, period. Even if black men are telling you that nobody wants you black women, you're still a prize. So here's a fun fact. Okay, Cupid did a survey and they found that the least desirable women were black women and the least desirable men were Asian men. Now there's a reason for this. The most desirable men were black men and the most desirable women were white women, of course. Now white women are more desirable than other races of women because their pool of, of dating is open. They can date white men because most men tend to date within their own ethnic group except black men. So when you take all men preferring either white women or women of their own race and then add black men in, it pushes white women up to the top and then it goes down based on degrees of ethnicity to black women being last. And black women are only last because our men are divided against us when it comes to our desirability. By and large, most black men are going to say that black women are the most desirable for them. But that outlying faction of black men that are saying, oh, we love white women, Hispanic women, Asian women are being added into this group and pushing that number up. On this side, you have white men as being most desirable with black men running close to the top of that because so many black women will only date and marry black men. That pushes their desirability up. So while they're stratified against us saying, some saying, mm, okay, some saying, mm, not really, some saying maybe, maybe both, but not exclusive, that lowers our desirability. Now with white men saying white women, Asian men saying white women, that boosts their desirability. Like I hope what I'm saying makes sense here. So, but this is what you got to look at. Here's what's interesting about that particular survey. On the surface, you would look at that and be like, well, damn. They don't like us. The men that tend to have the highest mean median income in this country are Asian men. They're controlling more of the majority of wealth that's not in the hands of white men. And the women who are the most upwardly mobile group, meaning the group of women that are capable of out earning their men. Okay. Like as much black women as we can, we can earn with white men. We really can. Most of the wealth in this country is in the hands of black, is in the hands of white men and black women. That is statistically true. When you look at black billionaires like Rihanna, black millionaires like Oprah, there are a lot more black women in this upper tier, economically speaking, than there are black men, even with the professional athletes. I see it. What I see it. Prove me wrong. I did my research. And there's people that have jumped down in here and say, well, that ain't true. That ain't. I don't care about your feelings. Feelings are not facts. Show me the numbers. So, but with black women being the only women in this country that are capable of out earning their men economically, is it truly a coincidence that both these groups are considered to be the most undesirable? of other races, I see an opportunity here. You know, like I'm not a big person of using media to determine what's actually going on in the real world, but I've seen these couples with these black women and these Asian men, they look happy. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I've only dated a, a couple of Asian men, but you know, all I'm saying black women is we have to be much more open-minded about what the institution of marriage is and what it's going to mean for us in our lives. Because if you already have a house, you already have a car, you have a degree, you have a career, and you're out here on your own alone because you're waiting on something that's been promised to you by a group of people that don't even have the same value system as you that don't even have the same value system that you do. It's time for us to start leading with what's actually going to be best for us instead of leading with our cultural identity.
Because at this point, if we don't begin to become more fluid about what we think marriage is and the purpose accomplishes, then we're not going to be able to use the institution the way that other ethnicities use it. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up and saying this is because a lot of people tell me how unsuccessful I am as a woman because I've been divorced twice. But I'm honestly at the point now where, like I said, I can choose you know, I have chosen marriage to bring stability to my family as long as it does. But if it creates more chaos than the problems that it solves, then we're, we're not going to be doing that. And we're not going to look down on each other for being single moms or for being divorcees, for choosing ourselves and choosing better. That's how we raise the standard. That's how we get these men to submit and conform like they want us to. Everything they've asked for, we have brought to the table. There has never been a time when black women have been submissive. This time in history has never existed. The only men that black women have ever submitted to were white men. White men that ran plantations white men that could take their freedom and their lives and their children and their men from them. These are the only men that have ever subjugated the black woman. They're the only men that have ever provided for the black woman, whether that was the plantation owner or the welfare government system that kicked the black man out of the house. It was still always the white man providing for the black woman. So here we are at this point. And if the black man expects to have a black woman at his side, he has to regard her for what she has always throughout history been, which is his equal. She's never had a day of rest. She's never been able to rest in her femininity. When black men say we desire women, we desire white women and women of other races more than we desire black women, what they're saying is that these groups of men have provided so much rest for their women that their women are what we deem to be what a woman should be. And what they're admitting in that statement is that black men cannot raise a woman, cannot raise a daughter, a young woman up to be what a white man or Asian man or Hispanic man can raise his daughters and women and wives and mothers. The rest that they're able to provide for their women is not available to the black woman. So we're not going to keep playing this game. We're not going to keep going to terms with it. But what we do have by being a group of people that are coming to the table 50-50, because, you know, we were the crack moms in the 80s. We were the crack moms, the, the project chicks, the chicken heads, the ghetto queens. And I got to be honest and applaud you. I applaud you, Black women, for taking your Black female image in your hand and becoming doctors and lawyers and politicians and the people that your culture and your people needed you to be. Okay, you're doing it. If nobody else is telling you that, I'm telling you that you're doing the damn thing. You're doing it. You're the most educated women in this country. You're the most upwardly mobile. You're the, you're the largest number of small business owners. We need you to do what you've been doing and we love you. When, when these clowns on the internet say you're not accountable, that you're not bringing anything to the table, baby, disregard. Because that's not true of the black woman. That's not true of any black woman that I know. Now the attitudes, now this, now that, y'all need, some of y'all need to heal, I ain't gonna lie. Some of y'all need to heal from your trauma and some of y'all need to pick better examples. Megan Thee Stallion and Chloe Bailey and some of these people, these can't be your role models. Some of y'all really do need to choose better role models, but you're taking what's been given to you and you're doing the dang thing. So here's the opportunity that we do have as black men and black women coming into marriages with each other, we're each already bringing our own. I mean, if our men have, I'm saying if you're getting those men to have their own, okay? The 50-50 men, if they got their 50 and you got your 50, if he got a house and you got a house, if he got a car and you got a car, if y'all, then you're coming to this situation because our men have forced us to do these things on our own. We're coming to the situation better equipped than a lot of other women, a lot. And I'm not, 
making stereotypes, but a lot of Hispanic, Indian, white women, they're able to stay at home with their parents until they're 25 and 30, until they saved money to buy a house and buy. We're out on our own at 18, black women. Like we're out on our own at 20. Our, our parents just don't have it. Our single parents, our mom, our single parent home don't have it to support us for 20, 30 and 40 years while we wait on a husband. So if we as black women are coming to the table with just as much wealth, with just as much earning capability as our men, we have a, an ability to multiply. We have an ability to be twice as strong together. When they tell you that they want these white women, uh, uh, the thing about a black man is if he marries a black woman, he can marry up. If he marries a white woman, he'll have to marry down more often than not. Now, it's becoming more and more commonplace. We're seeing women of other ethnicities that are marrying down into black men, but they're getting the same black men. They see it. They know. They're leaving too. So we're going to have to stop making these men and these marriages the prize. And if we are going to prize marriage and, and prize it as a value system, then it has, if we're going to invest in it as an institution, then it has to be just that. We're going to have to start closing our legs to men that are not capable of bringing their 50% to the table. We already know finances are the number one reason why marriages fail. So we can't go into these. If you got an itch, go ahead and, and let somebody scratch it and stop worrying about God in heaven. Because if you got that much lust in your heart anyway, God already know it's there. You know, you can date these men, enjoy these men, have a good time with these men. But you cannot marry and have children with a man that's not a man. That's not even doing at least what you could do. You know, it's time for us to put the carrot back on our stick and be the prize that we have always been in this country. Black women have raised white women's kids. Black women since the inception of this country have been the backbone of so many families and households. That's who you are, that's what you bring. Place the value on that, that your experience, your trauma, the things that you have been through to stand in your womanhood, make those things valuable. And then add tax. And then add reparations. You are too valuable to be on a string 10 and 12 years for some man that does not even value the same things that you do because if he did, he would make you a wife. It's 2022. We're, we're not on this mantra of proposing to men. We're not even on this mantra of being wives unless being a wife comes with something you can't do on your own. Unless men begin to incentivize us being their wives, us giving birth to them, we going to stop. That's what we going to do. We going to do what we've been doing, which is investing in ourselves getting ourselves to a place, staying focused and getting ourselves to a place where we can finally get some of the rest that we deserve. If our men can't provide this for us, we're going to have to start working together in concert as the strong women that we are to begin to build this wealth, build this community back and give some rest and some trauma free dignity to our children. So I'm a high five y'all. Tag you in, you tag, I'm tagging you in. 2022 is all about black women finding their purpose, dignity, their voice. Start that business, start that podcast. Whatever it was that you said to yourself you couldn't do, whatever you put on the back burner for your relationships and for your children, we getting that out. You are the next generation. This is your second act. Whatever it is that somebody needs to say to you to motivate you to do what you need to do, lose that weight. Start that degree program. Like, I don't care whatever it is, do it. Do it now. Now is the time. The next generation of women is looking at us and waiting on us to give them their cues and tell them who they are and what to do. And we can't do that as long as we bickering back and forth with a bunch of little, with a bunch of scared little boys on the internet about the value of a woman. These, these, these Negroes came out of us telling us who we are. 
I don't think so. So, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the wireless woman. I hope that as we go on this journey, you will become wireless with me. It's time to unplug. It's time to be unbothered. And it's time to be unleashed. Until the next time, class is now dismissed.